Um, now uh, we'll officially start the meeting and uh, I will like to cordially invite everyone to uh, thank you for being present here. And uh, we have our uh, the very first honorable guest speaker for our this new exciting series about CPS Frontiers. So we are excited to have Dr. Mizan Rahman, uh, who is an assistant professor of uh, civil engineering, sorry, Department of Civil Construction and Environmental Engineering. And uh, we will have Dr. Mashur Rani Choudhury, our center director, to introduce Dr. Rahman. And before that, I just wanted to uh, mention that our uh, program coordinator, Charlotte Riggs, she is absent today, but she did a tremendous amount of job to arrange these new um, speaker series. And I hope that like the, our regular distinguished speaker series, this will also uh, like serve uh, to our uh, to a great amount of um, new about new topics and it will also be exciting and uh, informative for all of you. So with that, I would like to um, invite Dr. Mashur Rani Choudhury, the CTM2 director to uh, in, uh, introduce Dr. Mizanur Rahman. Thank you, Dr. Sakib Khan. Uh, welcome to our uh, series, uh, CPS Frontiers. Our first speaker today our, in the series is Dr. Mizanur Rahman. He is an assistant professor in the Department of Civil in, uh, Construction and Environmental Engineering at the University of Alabama. He's also the director of the Connected and Automated Mobility Laboratory or CAM Lab at the University of Alabama. His research focuses on traffic flow theory, driver behavior modeling for connected and automated vehicles, cybersecurity, artificial intelligence-based predictive analytics, and transportation cyber physical systems. He was a recipient uh, of the best paper award from ITS Society of America uh, in 2014. Recently, he received the 2015 IEEE ITS Society Best Transaction Paper Award for Outstanding Survey. Dr. Rahman received his MSc and PhD degrees in civil engineering uh, from Clemson University. Uh, after his graduation, he joined as the assistant director of our Center for Connected Multimodal Mobility. Um, and um, so he also served as the primary research associate for our NSF Engineering Research Center uh, planning grant. And he uh, conducted many exciting projects while, while he was in Cle at Clemson University. So this is one of the projects that were funded by C2M2 while he was here. And I'm very proud to say that he was my PhD and master student. So uh, I'm, uh, now I'm uh, glad to welcome and very proud to welcome Dr. Mizanur Rahman. Thank you, Dr. Chaudhary, and thank you, Dr. Khan, for nice words and uh, introducing me. So in today's talk, I will uh, present a physics-based longitudinal control model for automated vehicles, especially, I mean, it considers the mixed traffic environment. So it means like when you have connected vehicles, human-driven vehicles, and other road users, how uh, the control model should be and how it will work or how it will actuate the autonomous vehicle controller. So let's, uh, okay, let's pause here. So this is the outline um, I'll follow. So at the beginning, I'll talk about the big background and motivation and following that, I'll present the objectives. And I'll, I'll take you through the model development process. That is very interesting, like uh, when we develop the model and, uh, and the evaluation of the model. So uh, after that, I'll show a case study with the real world data, how it works, how it performs. And I'll conclude with some uh, conclusions at the end. So this is the Tesla autopilot uh, mode uh, driving scenario. Like on the right hand side, you can see several cameras that is uh, uh, attached with the vehicle and it shows uh, the surrounding environment, how it can scan surrounding environment, different objects, vehicles, and based on that scan information, how it moves uh, through like the roadway. It shows a two-lane, two-way roadway. 
And uh, for that, you need a longitudinal control model, actually driver model that, that has two different aspects. One is longitudinal control and lateral control. So it is very important, uh, like how you're going to use the sensed information using different in-vehicle sensors and using it for uh, actuating the vehicle movement. So let's uh, look at a little bit uh, more detail, like uh, what an autonomous vehicle contains in terms of hardware and software. So we all know it will have just like human organ, like ear, eyes, autonomous vehicle will have different sensors. And uh, it could have uh, communication if it is like vehicle to everything communication radios are there. So it can sense information for communication and it, it, it knows like where a vehicle is or where a pedestrian is if it is connected. And there is a actuation block uh, in AV hardware systems that actuates based on the sensing information. So in the software side, uh, the autonomous vehicle will perceive the surrounding environment using those sensor information and V2X communication. You have V2X communication information. So it scans the environment, uh, surrounding environment and it look at itself based on that. And then the planning module controls the mission planning, like from origin to destination, like how, what is, what is its mission, what it needs to fulfill. Uh, the behavioral planning module controls or uh, plan for like how it can communicate with the surrounding environment or sense surrounding environment and plan accordingly. And finally, it will do the path planning. So those, those, all those plannings will do the planning module and the control module has two, two components. One is lateral control and another is longitudinal control. So those control information will be passed through the actuators of autonomous vehicle and it can actuate accordingly, like uh, does it need to accelerate or decelerate? So today's talk mainly focused on longitudinal control and I'm going to present a physics-based uh, autonomous vehicle longitudinal control model today. So let's, before, before going into the concept, before uh, going into the concept and other details, let's look at, I mean, how uh, a human drive, a driver uh, usually drive or, or when, when it follows another vehicle. Let's say you are in the red car, that is a subject vehicle, and uh, I will turn into autonomous vehicle later, but let's say you are driving, how you do it? how you follow another vehicle, or if, you, if there is no vehicle, how you uh, proceed uh, or move forward. So what it does, it, 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 it looks at or try to sense what is the speed of immediate front vehicle, or probably what is the speed limit of the roadway. Based on that, he tries to uh, follow that vehicle or try to follow the speed limit. So that is one information based on that you can decide how you will actuate your vehicle. Like, are you going to accelerate or probably are you going to press the brake pedals, right? And other information, uh, those are very traditional variables we usually use for a long, long time. So the gap between uh, like your vehicle and the vehicle in front of you, that is another information that help you to uh, actuate the vehicle. And for sure, I mean, you will also think about your speed, like at what speed you are following. So based on those information, actually what you do, you actually, uh, you actuate the vehicle, as I said before, accelerate or decelerate. And then uh, there are some other variables you can derive from those information that could be relative speed based on like forward vehicle speed or immediate front vehicle speed, you can calculate. Or, I mean, you can assess the safe gap. What could be the safe uh, gap for you and keep that gap to follow other vehicles or, or, or move forward through uh, traffic. And there is another component that is reaction time. So as a human, when uh, we see something, uh, it takes some time to react. I mean, your brain 
can sense and then it can passes through your hand or uh, like your leg. That means like you are pressing the acceleration or uh, brake pads, right? But for autonomous vehicle, that will change to computational time. So how long it will take because all the sensors inside uh, the autonomous an autonomous vehicle can sense the environment and then it will process and it takes some time to process all those information. That is actually reaction time for autonomous vehicle. So this is how it works and we can transfer uh, some of the information like what are, are factors we are considering uh, as a human driver modeling, how we can make it to use it for autonomous vehicle. So, so what we need to consider, I mean, what are the aspects uh, we need to consider to follow a preceding vehicle or, or maintain a desired speed? That's what you do. I mean, as I said before, or you try to avoid collision. Those are the two key aspects you do um, uh, as, as a human driver. For autonomous vehicle, that's exactly the same thing it will do but it will do with in-vehicle sensors as I'm sensing information and using its actuators. So if you try to model the controller, longitudinal controller, so what, what could be the formulation process? Because you have some variables you can think of as a human driver. In the same way, autonomous vehicle will do the same. So it will have some stimulus. Based on that, it will decide what it needs to do. So this is the simplest equation people are using for a long, long time. In 1950s, General Motors, like that, that time, General Motors developed the first uh, car following model, or you can say longitudinal driving behavior model. So it follows the same principles, like there will be some stimulus. And today we are using the same uh, concept uh, there will be some stimulus and based on that, you will have some response and there will be a sensitivity function that equals the stimulus and control function. That's why they have several parameters that you need to estimate depending on different driving condition. That is one of the challenges they had all the time. I mean, uh, when there is a model, there are some variables, mathematical model, there will be some variables and there are some parameters that changes uh, based on the traffic condition. Traffic condition means it could be a stop and go traffic. That could be one example or, or, or in a freeway driving, uh, how, I mean, how you are going to move forward. That will be completely different what you do in urban scenario, right? So those are the uh, factors, I mean, uh, you need to consider when you will calibrate the model. So that is there, but we'll see how we can uh, accommodate that challenge in our modeling uh, part. So, so uh, I mean, let's, let's think about, yes, we know there will be stimulus, there will be some sensitive factor and you will respond to that. But again, in mixed traffic, what could be the challenges? And these are very, very old challenges but uh, still people are trying to uh, see, I mean, researchers, are, researchers are trying to see how they can incorporate those I mean, factors appropriately and mitigate those challenges. So the safety assurance, that is the first thing. Whatever model you develop, controller model, you have to make sure in a generalized fashion, I mean, in every scenarios, it will be safe. It is, if it is not safe, you're done. I mean, that model will not work for sure. And there are many models that make sure like uh, it is safe. But on top of it, there are some challenges in terms of riding comfort, right? In autonomous vehicle, there will be no driver. Uh, although we are saying driver behavior modeling because we think in a mixed traffic environment, uh, driver will not drive, but vehicle will drive in a way so that the other human drivers surrounding it don't feel it is something, it, it is doing something in a different way or in, in, a, in an unexpected way, I should say. So that is, that, is, that is a major challenge, I think, when you try to develop a model. So if you try to make sure like, okay, there is a riding comfort, 
for the passenger because the passengers passengers are there and uh, you are going very fast or very slow i mean the fluctuation of speed uh, i mean changing very rapidly the problem is uh, as a passenger we will not be comfortable and uh, even in our uh, conventional vehicle when i drive if i accelerate too much suddenly or decelerate too much suddenly i mean people will not be comfortable even i will not be comfortable as a driver too so that is uh, we need to consider for sure and uh, end of the day it should be stable we can do it can be safe it can be comfortable but how stable it is like when there is stop and go traffic right we can consider all those factors and those are old very i mean for the long time people are thinking about it for driver behavior modeling but especially for autonomous vehicle those are the key i mean in simulation people use this kind of model at the beginning right or for adaptive cruise control people use it but now when you will use an autonomous vehicle you have to be really really careful how you can consider those factors now when you do all those factors at the same time there is a problem you might uh need to do some trade off with the operational um, reliability operational reliability means you might mm, i mean have the riding comfort but probably you are going too slow or not too slow i mean the speed you want to achieve you are not going to achieve it because of riding comfort right so you need to make sure on top of it uh, addressing all those challenges you are maintaining operational reliability i i mean by operation reliability like at what speed you should uh, drive the vehicle not you for in this case like autonomous vehicle will drive the vehicle so uh, based on those uh, challenges will develop a, i mean I, i'm going to present a longitudinal control model and uh, i'll show you i'll present the investig how we investigate the model equi equilibria uh, like static equilibrium or dynamic equilibrium and how it responds and uh, how it can ensure uh, the safety and and stability and finally uh, we'll investigate the riding comfort and how uh, it can dynamically follow the safe gap um and, and at the same time it maintains the safety so so it is not only about the developing a model and showing in some scenarios like it works very well at the same time when you have a mathematical model you have to make sure or you have a th you have to prove theoretically how 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 it can generalize all the scenarios like it can be safe for all the scenarios and then for sure uh, i'll show you some analysis with synthetic data and real world data how it behaves or how it performs so let me take you through the model development process um for for that purpose uh we have some consideration as i said there are some challenges we will incorporate those challenges like safety passenger comfort and stability but the unique there are some unique features of this model like as i said i mean long time from long time back people are trying to develop the model and those models have some parameters you need to always calibrate depending on the different traffic states for our model like pebble driver model uh you don't need to do that i mean you don't need to call um, uh, calibrate depending on the traffic situation how it will behave that is very interesting feature uh, but only thing you need to give to the model like maximum acceleration limit and deceleration limit and it is always based on the vehicle type and for sure if you know the your vehicle acceleration deceleration limit and that will be that will be uh, like those uh, values you need uh, only for, uh, for 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 our model and uh, and another aspect like um, uh, when you will be a, uh, another aspect is like autonomous driving aggressiveness that is important because you, different passenger has different um, i mean choice in terms of driving how fast or how quick it will respond so it depends on the personality the, yeah i mean we say like it depends on the age but an old uh, person can 
choose like to drive the vehicle a little bit aggressively, right? So we have that factor in the model. So through human machine interface of an autonomous vehicle, a, 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 a passenger can choose or user can choose, okay, uh, I want to drive the vehicle in that fashion or this fashion. So, so we'll explain all those things in detail uh, uh, in, 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 in next, uh, uh, next few slides. And, and, and we'll, we'll show how the mathematical modeling uh, uh, we did uh, for developing the model. So uh, this is, uh, I'm trying to tell you the concept uh, in this slide, but uh, probably it is not going to give you the whole picture, but uh, over the time when I'll show other slides, you'll understand the model uh, concept uh, in a better way. But let me first introduce different variables. So as I said, when a vehicle follows another vehicle, or even there is no vehicle, it follows the road speed limit. Basically, it considers the speeds um, of, of that vehicle or the preceding vehicle, right? Here, like VF, that means the preceding vehicle speed and VAV, it, 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 uh, it is the speed for the subject vehicle, subject autonomous vehicle, I'm showing. Sure. And I'm defining here different types of gap. And the first gap uh, you need to consider, you see there are three um, circles with different colors. Uh, the first circle shows the range you need to consider or the gap you need to, you have to have when a vehicle with uh, at a standstill uh, condition or state. That means like you are in a concession, your vehicle is there, at least you will keep minimum gap. So uh, that is S, uh, sub S not. And the second thing uh, you need to consider or you need to develop a function that can tell you what is the safe gap in front of you because it depends on the speed, right? So when a preceding vehicle do a sudden acceleration, uh, deceleration or press suddenly uh, on, on brakes, uh, then what will happen? You need to stop safely, right? So that is the safe, safe gap uh, I meant, and um, and it changes depending on uh, what at what speed you are driving, or the autonomous vehicle uh, will will drive itself, right? So the third one is the available gap. What is the available gap in front of you? That means the gap between your vehicle and the autonomous vehicle and the vehicle in front of uh, in front of the autonomous vehicle. So, so it depends, I'll, uh, here I'm showing uh, is uh, if gap is equal if vehicle, I mean, how, how it works, I'll show later, but that is the available get, uh, gap I meant here. And then if you don't have anything, uh, for example, you don't have any vehicles in front of you, so what will be your limit? Your limit, I mean, in terms of gap will be the sensor, how much the sensor can sense in terms of distance, right? So those are the variables uh, we can think of in terms of gap. And finally, you can, you can calculate the available gap beyond the safe gap. I mean, safe gap we need to keep always, but what is the gap beyond the safe gap you want to, fill it up, I mean, by accelerating the vehicle or probably uh, to make sure there is a safe gap, uh, you can decelerate a little bit and maintain that one. So that is the overall uh, idea about different types of variables. And there are some other variables I'll introduce over the time, but uh, based on those concepts, like uh, we developed dynamic safe gap functions, uh, comfortable acceleration deceleration functions. I'll, I'll talk to you and take you through that process. So here I'm going to show a block diagram. Uh, so here it shows the vehicle, the subject autonomous vehicle and it, using that sensors, at, actually what it can do, it can sense its own dynamics, like what is the speed or acceleration of that vehicle, uh, of that autonomous vehicle. Also it can sense the dynamics, vehicle dynamics, what is the gap or probably uh, the speed, not probably the speed of, of, of the front vehicle, right? So those are the information you can get 
just using vehicle sensor of an autonomous vehicle. So sensors could be like um, any radar sensor, or LIDAR sensor, or probably there might be some communication or less communication, V2V, vehicle to vehicle communication. So those are all uh, different types of sensors and you can use those sensors to sense those information. So using those information, you can uh, define, uh, you can calculate a dynamic, uh, safe dynamic gap. And we developed a function. I'll show you like what is the function in the next slide um, or later part of the presentation. And from that, I'm showing the whole process, how, uh, what are the components of that model? Uh, what you need, to, uh, what functions you need for, for, for that model. And based on that information, you can calculate net gap. The net gap is the gap beyond the safe gap. So you can calculate that based on the available gap information and uh, the safe gap. Okay, so uh, using those information, you can calculate the comfortable acceleration function, uh, comfortable acceleration and comfortable distillation. That's why you develop two different functions, uh, one for acceleration and one for deceleration. Those functions can tell you what could be the comfortable actuation of the vehicle. That is very important for uh, making sure the ride is uh, comfortable. Uh, so there, after that, we'll have three different uh, two, two different speed functions, one based on the comfortable acceleration and another based on comfortable distillation. And for sure, uh, the sensor of that vehicle will sense the rotary speed limit. So those are the three speeds we'll have based on like safe gap, comfortable acceleration, distillation, all those information. And then we'll have a minimum function because you can have three different options to choose, but at a certain moment, what would be your speed, okay? So, so there, is, there will be a minimum function that will tell you, okay, this is the speed you need to follow. And if you have a derivation function, for sure that will tell you the desired acceleration and deceleration that uh, you have to have uh, to controlling the vehicle. I mean, longitudinal movement of the vehicle. That is the overall picture, like uh, what our model contains. And uh, after this uh, slide, I'll show you step by step how we developed and what, what it is, like safe dynamic function, net gap function, comfortable uh, excision distillation function, and all the speed function. So before going into each component, at first, I want to show you the um, complete model, like uh, what is the end model or it, uh, a mathematical model uh, like Pebble DM driver model. So this is what I will focus on uh, in the next slide because there are many different pieces of this uh, of this driver model, a longitudinal control model. So I'll show you step by step so so that you can follow easily. So this is the uh, equation uh, for our, our minimum function that can tell you what is the speed based on all the information like information from dynamic safe gap and comfortable acceleration distillation. Uh, yeah, based on that, it can tell you, I, I showed you there will be three different function and these are the function you have. The one is the speed function for acceleration. Okay, so as I said, this is physics based model. We have uh, used the V is equal U plus A to that equation. But interestingly, it is not only that simple because we have comfortable acceleration. So how you can uh, calculate the comfortable acceleration, that is very important. So, so we are using physics equation uh, for modeling uh, the longitudinal control, but on top of it, it has different features. And this is the speed limit you will have from the sensors you can sense and, and you can use it. And the third one is the speed function for deceleration. So this is also like very well-known physics equation. But you see there are some component like comfortable deceleration and net gap, what you are calculating dynamically uh, at every moment, right? And these will give you the speed of a subject AV. And that speed 
will be transformed to like acceleration or deceleration. So it depends on that. So now you might have a question why we are getting the minimum value of those three. For example, you want to accelerate, but you might have two options. Like there will be a vehicle and there may not be a vehicle in front of you. So what is, this, what is the speed you need to follow? So if there is a vehicle, you're following a vehicle, in that case, you need to use that part, uh, that function. And if you don't have any vehicle in that case, probably uh, the, your posted speed limit will be your speed. So, and, and based on that, you can accelerate or uh, you can accelerate. And for, uh, if there is a situation like you need to deselect, that function will uh, govern, right? So, so it has different components and uh, depending on the situation, it can switch from one function to another function. So now I'll talk about uh, uh, the comfortable acceleration and comfortable deceleration functions. Uh, so those functions depends on the hyper, term hyperbolic, hyperbolic function. We're using that function because uh, we think it, uh, act, it represents the, to some extent, uh, human driving behavior, like how it, uh, a human driver uh, press the acceleration or press the brake pedal. So that like in mixed traffic environment, it can be presents that behavior. And it is, um, and other vehicles um, uh, may be comfort, will be comfortable, uh, like how the autonomous vehicle uh, will actuate. So this is uh, the hyperbolic function we are using, but we have two different uh, um, variables. One is relative speed, you can see like VF minus VAV. So before talking about that, uh, let me tell you so how the function will work. So you will have the maximum acceleration or maximum deceleration. We'll talk about the comfortable deceleration part in the next slide. But in this slide, basically I'm showing how we'll calculate the comfortable acceleration. So you'll have the maximum acceleration but what is the portion of that maximum acceleration or the whole, I mean, let's say you have maximum acceleration two meter per second is square. So what is the portion of two meter per second is square you're going to use for comfortable acceleration? Okay. So, so the first uh, part, uh, it depends on the relative speed. We are not going to cover uh, like relative speed and the available gap beyond the safe gap in one equation. The reason is that uh, if you combine those two together, one problem will be what is the weight you are going to give to the available gap function, uh, available gap beyond the safe gap uh, variables, and what is the weight you are going to give to the relative speed. So that is that will that will uh, 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 lead you to add some parameters and uh, it will be it will depends on different traffic situation and that will complicate the whole situation end of the day i mean how you are going to model the longitudinal controller so here we have one interesting parameter as i said before i mentioned before like driver aggressiveness factor and that factor uh, you can choose based on like your choice. At the bottom, you can see there are two figures. It shows uh, on y-axis, it shows like comfortable acceleration or comfortable deceleration. If you use negative sign, it will become the deceleration value. But here, just uh, focus on the comfortable acceleration. So how it varies. So those function, we have two function. Uh, we have comfortable acceleration function and it shows the two graphs at the bottom shows like how it varies. So K, if the K value is one, that means it is like highly aggressive. I mean, how the vehicle will act or react, that will be very aggressive. If the K value is lower, it will uh, act slowly. That means it, it depends on, as I say, the relative speed or available gap beyond the safe gap. So how it changes depending on that, how uh, the vehicle will react or act, okay? So you see this uh, curve shows like it is, the response is very quick uh, while it is changing the relative speed, right? But the blue color uh, dotted line shows it is slower than that one when, K, when the K value is 0 0.25. So you have that option, you can change the aggressiveness and depending on passenger choice or user user's choice, you can, they can decide uh, how, how it will move forward, how aggressive it will be. 
And one interesting thing we have here, like uh, when, when the first option will be applicable, um, it says there is a sensor error. The epsilon represents the sensor error of autonomous vehicle. So when the sensor error is, uh, when your relative speed is higher than the sensor error, so it could be zero, but instead of zero, we are putting a sensor error. The reason is that you cannot tell like the, you know, when it is at a static condition, the vehicle, it will show the relative speed is zero or or, or if there is uh, two vehicles and both vehicles having the same speed, it will show exactly zero value. So instead of zero, we put it as um, a value that shows like the maximum range of sensor error. So if it is greater than that, uh, uh, then the relative velocity is greater than the epsilon, uh, we'll use the first option. And the second option we'll use like when it is equal to, um, the sensor error. The reason is that when there is no relative, uh, no diff, uh, I mean, relative, when the relative velocity is equal to epsilon, uh, that means the sensor error, what will happen? Um, like you might have very long gap, but your relative velocity is very close to each other. That means you're not going to, the acceleration function will not give you uh, the acceleration value that will make the vehicle speed up, right? So that is the problem. So that, that's why we consider <clears throat> the gap in the second option and, and it will give you uh, the acceleration value based on that. So when uh, the relative speed will not work, basically the gap will tell you what will be your comfortable acceleration. And uh, as I said before, those functions can uh, present uh, like how, how, how it behaves, okay? By changing the relative speed and changing the gap beyond the safe gap. So this is the overall concept, the comfortable acceleration function. And same concept we have used for uh, comfortable deceleration. Uh, instead of acceleration, we'll have maximum deceleration and it behaves very similarly, or we can change it in a different way for different uh, for 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 uh, deceleration because sometimes you might have different limit for maximum acceleration and maximum deceleration. So if the limit is changed, the curve will change. But for our for this case, actually, we are using the same maximum acceleration that is a maximum deceleration that is 1.5 meter per second square. So that is the idea, like how we can define the comfortable acceleration and comfortable deceleration. And that is the only factor you have here. Um, you can see the driver aggressiveness factor, and that is depends on the uh, passenger choice. Other than that, we'll not have any kind of like parameters in the model. So let's look at like what uh, else we have. Uh, now we, we, we have to define the dynamic safe gap function. That is very, very important because uh, at every moment when the speed will change, the, the function should give you the safe gap and, and, and it will change over the time. I mean, every moment, right? So, so let's look at it. I mean, if it is at a standstill still state, then you will not have any or standstill condition, like you will not have any speed, right? This part will be zero and, and, and there is no other vehicle probably, and it will be negative actually, if you have a vehicle, but you are at a static condition. So in that case, you are using, um, instead of negative value, we are going to use zero value. So that means the whole part will be zero actually. I mean, when you are at a static condition, the vehicle will be at a static condition. But when it is moving forward, it will add some distance, safe distance on top of it. And if there is a uh, difference between the velocities, uh, between the front vehicle, front vehicle and the subject vehicle, it will add more distance. So it depends on like how the vehicle is acting and at what condition it is. So this is, this is dynamic safe gap function and it is completely new compared to all other existing model we have currently. And, and you see, it doesn't have any kind of like um, parameters in this uh, equation. Uh, only thing you have the time step. I mean, what is the time step uh, you're using and updating the function, right? 
So this is dynamic gap function and based on dynamic gap, gap function, what you can do, you can calculate the available gap beyond the safe gap and that uh, gap you want to reduce if you are accelerating or probably if you are very close to dynamic safe gap or um, you are probably less than safe gap, you, you, you will try to decelerate. So that's how, that's how it will work. So these are the all components. Um, uh, for our model and those are the equations we followed but uh, as I said at the beginning I mentioned you like how we are going to uh, decide what is the minimum available gap in front of the subject vehicle so if there is no other vehicle for sure uh, the sensor range will tell you this is the gap you have and probably you are going to speed up the vehicle will speed up based on the controller formulation the mathematical formulation or if you have a vehicle, uh, in that case, the gap will be uh, the distance between the autonomous vehicle and the vehicle in front of it. So this is how you can choose what is your minimum available gap. You, you, you need to look for the minimum value because if you have two, three options, which one you are going to use in a mixed traffic environment? Okay, so the next thing is like, there might be two options for um, speed. As I said before, if you have a vehicle that is speed will be the forward vehicle speed or preceding vehicle speed. Um, or if you don't have, then like your posted speed limit will be the speed. Uh, and you can use that one to actuate the vehicle uh, movement, longitudinal movement. So uh, that is the modeling part. Uh, I try to take you through the different process and aspects when we develop the model of what we thought uh, for processing or developing the model, right? And <clears throat> here I'm showing uh, static, uh, how you can make sure uh, like uh, at a static condition and dynamic condition, our model follows uh, like, uh, and make sure it is safely operate. So in, in our paper here, you can see the uh, reference that is static condition, the safe gap, available safe gap should be equal to S naught, that is standing still gap and in dynamic condition, the F gap should be the safe gap and that is S naught plus V uh, uh, multiplied by delta. So that is, that is the equation. And, and in, if you go to that reference, you can see in detail uh, how we uh, how how we proved that in all scenarios like static scenarios or dynamic scenarios in a general way uh, it follows that it follows those uh, conditions. Okay. So for local and string stability, there are two types of stability. Stability like for local one, like you will have just one vehicle in front of you. But for a string stability, you might have a, I mean, several vehicles and there will be a leader vehicle and other vehicles following it. And follower vehicles will have our model, right? So if there is a fluctuation in the speed, how it can accommodate, that is very important. You see, this is stable condition. There is a change in fluctuation. It can accommodate it very easily and follow the leader's vehicle speed. But here you see it is, it is not stable. So we need to make sure it is stable. You can develop the model. Yes, it can follow safely. It might give you some comfort, but on those different conditions, how it is stable, we need to measure that one. So we'll have theoretical proof of string stability and mathematically prove that in the, in, in the paper, actually. It is available. You can go and see it. Uh, I'm not going through all those things, but we proved in a general way. So for model evaluation part, I'll tell you like with synthetic data and how we evaluate it. So we considered cooperative adaptive cruise control scenario. And in that scenario, we considered four vehicles, including the litter vehicle. And we, we give a profile a to the vehicle in front of the CACC platoon. So uh, depending on how this vehicle will move, the other vehicles will move. And we included uh, our model in those vehicles. And all those things that happened in, uh, Matt, I mean, we developed the code and we coded in MATLAB. So 
So we give the black solid line, it represents the speed profile of the vehicle in front of the CSCC platform, and it shows that how other vehicles will follow. So this is the speed profiles diagram. And uh, we use driver aggressiveness factor one, because if it is, that, that is the most aggressive driving situation. If it can uh, show that or prove that like it works fine with K is equal, it should be fine with other driver aggressiveness factor. And it, uh, we use the initial speed 15 meter per second. So those are the this this is the scenarios we considered and the reason for choosing the CACC scenario cooperative adaptive cruise control because that is the most complicated scenario you can have to test your model if it works fine in that scenario it should be uh, good in, in any other scenario so these are the profiles it shows like speed profiles as I showed before but here I'm showing the gap profiles to make sure it is following the gap. Um, and, and how it changes dynamically and does it safe or not. It shows always the positive value for all vehicles. It means it is safe, but it doesn't tell you, that means it is safe in terms of our analysis, you can say that, but it doesn't tell you how comfortable it is. I mean, that's why you need to look at the passenger comfort part. Here, you can see all the vehicles in a CSC scenario, the leader vehicle will follow his speed and all the follower vehicles should follow the same speed. If it does not or close to that, then your model is not working that well. Uh, there is a delay, um, my, there might be a delay, right? Or other issues. So here you can see all the vehicles, follower vehicles follow the leader vehicle speed. Uh, I mean, the gap, gap is same. And the speed here, we are showing the speed and the speed is very closely, uh, close to each other, okay. So as I said, the gap doesn't tell you how comfortable it is. And there is another metric like jerk it calls and uh, it means the rate of change of acceleration. That is a definition. So how fast you are accelerating or how fast you are decelerating. That's what will tell you like, you will be comfortable or not. And for autonomous vehicle, there are several references that tells like if it is within one meter per second cube and the passenger should be comfortable. And we can see that this is the acceleration distillation profile. And here you can see the jarred profiles. And you can see that all those scenarios, because we have like uniform speed, there is a acceleration, then zero acceleration, uniform speed, that means, and deceleration. So all those scenarios, it keeps the uh, jarred within the one meter per second cube limit. So that means it is our model is comfortable and that is the worst condition, worst scenario we consider to evaluate our model. So this is the local stability and string stability analysis results. It shows, I mean, how you can measure that one, right? So when you have a speed profile, this is the speed profile we have. And if you can introduce some uh, perturbation uh, to, to that speed profile, it can tell you like how it behaves and other vehicles will follow the speed. So that is very important to uh, understand and look at. Okay, so you'll see there is a perturbation, a small perturbation, a little bit bigger perturbation. And it shows like if there is a perturbation, it only the, the follower vehicle's speed, not only increasing, only increasing or probably when it is deceleration, it is not decaying. So it is following that speed. And that is a definition you see on the right hand, like when there will be a fluctuation, it, if it does not only increase or decay over time, that means the model is stable. And we, we proved it theoretically, but here we are showing uh, through our analysis, like it is following and the gap and the speed, and all those profiles can tell us like it is stable in different scenarios. And we did some comparison like with a, a state of the art longitudinal control model that is IDM. And if you look at the error, we calculated L1 and L2 error. And that error shows we have very less error compared to, compared to the IDM model. And it shows the efficacy of our model. And if you look at the JARC, uh, I mean, it is more smoother like compared to the IDM model. So the with real world data, I'll, yeah, I, I have, I think six minutes. <clears throat> anyway, I mean, we should be done. We have 
very few slides for this case study. So we thought, okay, we did some evaluation with synthetic data, but that doesn't mean like uh, how, this is how exactly it will work with the real world scenario, right? So that's why we looked into like how it behaves, our model behaves with the real world driving data. So we used comma AI data, they collected with their vehicles with like uh, autonomous vehicle sensor and uh, they drove that vehicle 33 hours and they drove like in 2019 segments on highway 280. And those, all those segments are in San Jose and San Francisco um, and, and the length was like 20 kilometers. This is the example data set I have. Uh, it gives you like a speed and location information and GNS, GNSS means like global navigation satellite system. That is GPS basically. It's showing uh, the time is stamp. Okay, so. So this is the, we, we evaluated and, uh, and, and, and what we did, we, we, we got a profile from the real world data and we put that profile to the vehicle in front of the platoon and other vehicles actually following the front vehicle. So that is the, uh, the, the vehicle in front of the platoon. If the vehicle in front of the platoon have the real world data, that means other vehicles needs to follow and in all other vehicles will have our model, okay? So it shows the all other vehicles following the speed profile very, very closely. And if you look at, there is a very, very small difference between the speed profiles. As here, I'm just showing like what is the speed errors and you see the speed errors in different vehicles with the leader vehicle is very close to zero. That means it is very closely following the leader vehicle. And the gap error, you can see they are closely following, I mean, each other. It, it also represents the same thing. And uh, in terms of passenger comfort, like if you look at the jar, you can see, I mean, it is far less than one meter per second square. And one thing I need to say, we choose a profile that has different like speed. I mean, low speed, high speed, and it is changing from high speed to low speed and low speed to high speed. So that is a representative speed profile, I should say. So yeah, I mean, this is my uh, conclusion based on our analysis, like we defined a new safeguard function and, uh, and it can maintain the safety, it shows local stability and string stability. It provides the comfort and you can define the driving aggressiveness uh, depending on your choice, I mean, user choice. And uh, it provides necessary smoothness in acceleration distillation. There is no, I mean, very less roughness in acceleration and distillation profile you can see. So, and, and at the end, like in future, it can, it can be extended to any transmission cyber physical system environment when you have information from different sources. Like currently we have autonomous vehicle that has only in vehicle sensors and we are talking about connecting to connecting the autonomous vehicle to the surrounding environment. So when you have that uh, opportunity, you can always use a model in the same way I described so far. So this is all from me. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, and, and please let me know if you have any question, you can just put your question in the chat box at Saki mentioned probably at the beginning. Also, you can speak speak up, like if you turn off the uh, mute button, turn on the turn off the mute button. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rahman. Oh, oh yes. You can ask question directly, or you can write in the chat box, please. Yeah, as Saki mentioned. Saki, if I miss any question, please, if you can. <clears throat> Okay, I can so, see. I can see it, Sakim. So, so I think uh, we uh, in the chat box. I will invite the audience to uh, type your questions, please, or you can unmute. So we are still waiting. But before, I, I want to give the audience uh, some time. So I have one question, Dr. Rahman. Is that yes, I think on slide sixteen, if you could uh, show that. So uh, my question was about the um, aggressiveness. Uh, K factor that was used. Mm -hmm. K value, sorry. Slide 16. 
Yeah, I'm going back to that slide. Yes. Yes. Yes, uh, the di driver aggressiveness factor. So uh, my question was, um, for uh, autonomous vehicle, like we have, I think this is for autonomous vehicle driving. So yes. wh which factor, uh, how this factor is coming to uh, the play that autonomous vehicles, will they have any aggressiveness or I'm- yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I got your point. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, if I misunderstood your question, but what I understood uh, from your description that uh, how it will play a role, right? So right. basically an user will use the autonomous vehicle, right? I, I, you will be in the autonomous vehicle or I will be in the autonomous vehicle. So for sure there will be like, um, I mean, there will be like uh, a driver aggressiveness. You can, uh, it, 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 by default, it might be there and also you can choose that is an option. I mean, if there is a human machine interface, if you want to go a little bit faster, like if you see the default settings, uh, like just going a little bit slow, you want to you want to drive the vehicle or you want to tell the vehicle, okay, can you drive a little bit faster? That can be done through driver aggressiveness factor. So then it will be there by default probably, I mean, for average driver, but the user will have an option like how you are going to change through human machine interface. I mean, I'm saying that is the option and you can choose like how vehicle can be controlled. So, so that, that, that's the role it will play, okay? And as a user, I will define, I mean, how it, it will be. I mean, you can tell this thing like, okay, I mean, as a user, I don't want to do that. That's fine. I mean, uh, the model will be implemented and it will follow the default settings, but you can change the settings depending on your wish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, it, yeah does that, it answer your question or please? Uh, yeah. Yes, that answers my question because I think I, I so we uh, did some study about the track platooning and there was a real world uh, test that was done. And in the driver interface, there was an option to closely follow the previous uh, previous track or not follow closely. So mm -hmm. I think this is how that will relate. Like if yeah. you want to, yeah, I, yeah, I, I agree. Mean, exactly, exactly. You, you, you are, yeah, you, you are to the point, yeah. Yes. So uh, Dr. Mokolonge and uh, Shagor, both of them thanked you for the presentation. It was great and it was adequate but compact. Uh, any question from the audience, uh, the students, or please speak up if you have any. It was a very good presentation and yeah. Dr. Rahman, thank you for your presentation. Um, I have one question. Um, it's very much close to what Sakib asked, but uh, just uh, just for my information, um, this comfortable acceleration and comfortable deceleration uh, mm -hmm. models, how, um, uh, like, uh, where are we getting this model? Is it uh, an experimental uh, based model, like an empirical model, or is it uh, like some other type of model? Can you say it again, Sabin? Uh, I missed the last part. I think there was a disturbance in sound. Oh. Uh, sorry, so um, I asked that the comfortable acceleration and comfortable deceleration, mm -hmm. these uh, hyperbolic, 10 hyperbolic models, um, mm -hmm. where are these models are coming from? Okay, so yeah, I mean, there are different functions you can use, like how it will respond, right? The 10 hyper hyperbolic function defines how the curvature of that, uh, like, of that response. So, so you can use different function. You can see in different driver model or car following model, they use different type of functions. So we chose this function. The reason is that like we want to, I mean, we want to make sure like in a mixed traffic environment when an autonomous vehicle will be there, their response, the autonomous vehicle response should be very close to like uh, other human driven vehicles. So that, that was the intention. And from that intention, we chose the hyperbolic function that can define how we praise, uh, I mean, as a human, how you praise the brake pedal or acceleration pedal. So from that perspective, we use the hyperbolic function and we found that it closely follow because the validation with real world data, it shows it closely follow 
the behavior how a human driver will drive. So Thank from you. that perspective, we use that function submit, but it can be any other function and we, we have to make sure we validate, like uh, this is a function we're using, but end of the day, like with real world data set or through evolution process, we need to make sure it is replicating that behavior. And especially it is important in the mixed traffic environment. Thank you. Thank you, Sabir. Any other question from anyone? Sorry, uh, Dr. <clears throat> Mokalong is asking, is it possible to get a copy of your paper? Yes, yes, uh, for sure. I can send you a copy, uh, Dr. Mokalanga, and also it is available in archive. So yeah, it is available online. Uh, in the last, I can send you the copy and at the same time, if you see, this is the reference uh, of that paper and it is available in archive. So the paper is under review and I worked with Dr. Choudhury um, and several uh, other professors, uh, one professor from mathematics and one student from mathematics. So yeah, it's a collaborative work um, uh, with Dr. Choudhury, yeah. So uh, Daniel has a question. <clears throat> uh, he say, thanks Dr. Rahman for the presentation. Easy, uh, it's very insightful. My question is, does the PAVL DM functions, uh, function very, based on state or country like uh <clears throat> so it depends on it's 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 a vehicle dynamics i understand like depending on uh, country like if you go to england or europe how it will act right so as i said it doesn't have any other parameters beyond the driver aggressiveness factor so that means if you set the maximum acceleration value and deceleration value, let me go to that slide. I mean, uh, it will be easier to follow. Uh, yes, so you see, I mean, uh, even if I go back to this uh, block diagram, so basically the, uh, the speed function and yeah, speed function depends on the comfortable acceleration deceleration, and it also depends on the gap, right? This is how it is related one, uh, I mean, with each other. So, so that means if it changes, I mean, uh, comfortable acceleration function value does not give you the proper acceleration value or deceleration value, so that means everything will change, right? So we, I mean, I'm saying, uh, if you look at this equation, you need to give the maximum acceleration value and deceleration value. If the configuration of, uh, of the vehicle changes depending on different countries or different brand model of the vehicle, so it can accommodate because by default, the maximum acceleration value and deceleration value will be there. And now depending on the country, the speed limit will change, right? It doesn't matter like if it is uh, if the speed limit is 55 mile per hour or it, if the speed limit is 70 mile per hour. So if the posted speed limit is higher, so it can accommodate uh, appropriately. And for sure, it makes sure like uh, it is following the maximum acceleration and deceleration values. So yes, I mean, it can accommodate. I mean, you don't need to change anything to the model, uh, truly speaking. Only thing you need to look at like, uh, make sure what type of uh, vehicle model you're using and what is the limit of that vehicle. Like for passenger car, it will be different for probably a truck. I mean, truck type of uh, vehicle, it might be a little bit different. So those kind of things you need to uh, consider and see like what appropriate values you can put there. I hope it answers this question. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, is there any other question from the audience? Daniel said, yeah, thank you. He answered his question. Any other question or? Okay, um, I don't see any more question from the audience, but uh, as usual, like the other uh, webinar videos, this video will be also posted in the our CTM2 YouTube channel. You are more than welcome to see the channel. Uh, uh, it will be posted in the next two, three weeks, uh, two weeks for within next weeks for sure. 
and <clears throat> if you have any question for the uh, speaker please reach out to us uh, and we can uh, communicate with him about your question and uh, thank you dr roman once again for this very informative and insightful presentation all the students learned a lot and it was a very good start for our new series yeah we are proud of this new uh, thank you so much <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you so much, Sakib and Dr. Choudhury, for giving me this opportunity. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you have any question, any audience, if you have any question, here is the email address. You can directly communicate with me, and I'd love to answer your question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye.